So uh, now we'll take these uh, shear functions and use them in the differential equation uh, using Galerkin method. So uh, remember uh, the uh, governing equation is the second derivative of the flexural stiffness multiplied by the second derivative of the displacement. So it actually involves a fourth order derivative of the function w of x. Uh, and that is equated with the loading term f of x. Uh, using the series solution uh, that we obtained uh, from the interpolation, uh, which includes the uh, shape functions, uh, we uh, get the governing equation in this form. Uh, this way, what you get is actually a, a residue. Uh, since this is an approximate solution, so the residue is not zero. Uh, use uh, weighted residual methods to minimize uh, the residue, and the most commonly used would be uh, the Galerkin method. Uh, in this case, we will integrate over the whole domain from zero to L, where L here is the length of the element. Uh, we will integrate the residue multiplied by the shape function L. So we will do this four times. Remember, we have four uh, shape functions. Uh, when, we, when we multiply each by the residue, we will obtain an equation. Uh, this equation uh, has the unknown coefficients wi's. We don't know wi's, remember. Uh, and then we equate this by zero. Repeat this four times. You obtain four equations in four unknowns, the wi's, and there you are, you get the uh, finite element mode. Uh, uh, the, the, the stiffness matrix is actually uh, found in any um, uh, textbook, any finite element textbook, uh, but in the next video I'll try to show you how we can do this derivation uh, using um, uh, Mathematica. Uh, and I will also uh, illustrate in the following video uh, how we can do this using a Gauss quadrature numerical integration. So that what we actually perform uh, using Mathematica can be extended to be used uh, for any other derivation of any other element. Uh, however, it's commonly uh, found that we will need to uh, perform the, numer uh, the integration numerically so uh, I'm, I'm going to uh, perform it numerically uh, using um, uh, FreeMath, which is uh, a software like MATLAB, just to demonstrate how we can do this. And then we can use the same method for uh, deriving other elements uh, and other uh, matrices in uh, finite element analysis. Now let me just uh, uh, show you how uh, the general form will look like. Uh, after applying the uh, integration by parts, uh, we get the, um, uh, the boundary terms uh, outside the integration. They're supposed to go to the right hand side. But as we did before, we're going to delay this uh, until we write down the whole uh, matrix. So now we have the second derivative of the shape function multiplied by the second derivative of another shape function in general. Uh, and uh, we perform this uh, in matrix form. Uh, it would look like a column vector multiplied by a row vector, and both include the second derivative. Uh, and uh, actually, here there's a mistake. This shouldn't be n x x, it's just n. Uh, and we get the right hand side as the integration of f multiplied by n. Uh, again, let me remind you, this is just n, not nxx. This is a, a typo. I'm sorry for that. Uh, 